Hey there, Gemini. Welcome to your reading for June 2019. Thank you so much for tuning in. So this is going to be a general energy reading, okay? So please take what resonates and leave what doesn't. If you would like a look into your own personal situation, please don't hesitate to email me. My email is in the description box below and I have re-added all of the readings that I offer into the description box so that you can read over them and see potentially what you might want before you you know reach out for a reading now if you want to actually move forward with a reading but you're you don't really know which one to go with email me and tell me a little about the situation you're looking for more clarity on we'll have a little chat and i'll help you decide yes so for june first of all happy birthday to you gemini welcome to gemini season all right all right um and a happy birthday to the may gemini's yes uh so i'm keeping it pretty normal, but then at the same time, a little bit different. Um, I'm going with a, the Golden Universal Tarot for a freestyle reading. Now, if you are interested in a freestyle reading for you, this would be a good um, uh, gauge as to what it would be like for you. This is a good view into that. Of course, you're not gonna be able to see the cards because when I do these general readings, I do like to speak to you guys face to face, unless it's morning coffee when I'm like just way too early for me to be, be on camera. but. Um, when I do a personal reading, it will the focus will be on the cards, not like on me. But you'll be able to get a good understanding of the reading through this general reading if this if you are new to the channel, yeah. But I'm using the Golden Universal Tarot for a freestyle reading, and then I will be pulling Oracle guidance. And this month, I have decided to get a brand new deck. I will be pulling Oracle guidance from the Sacred Rebels Oriole, Oracle, excuse me, by Alana Fairchild. Now. Um, I love this deck. It's beautiful. It's gorgeous. I'm really excited to see what's going to come out for you guys. Yeah? Okay. So let's let's move forward. Um, first of all, I have a little bit of a pre-shuffle energy here for you, Gemini. The first card that came out as the pre-shuffle was the Seven of Swords. And then we have the page, not the, excuse me, not the page, the Knight of Pentacles. After that was the Hermit, but the Hermit is in reverse, okay? And then you have the Two of Wands. Underneath the deck right now is the Ten of Swords, but then also the Temperance card caught my attention here. I kind of feel like for some of you Geminis here, there's some sort of decision that you need to make. Um, in which you might be procrastinating and maybe even deceiving yourself a little bit in what this decision needs to be. The Hermit in Reverse here is talking about, um, now this could be a Virgo energy, you could have Virgo in your chart um, as represented by the Hermit, but the Hermit in Reverse here is that there's some sort of delay or some, some, some sort of procrastination in doing some sort of deep soul work or soul searching um, to understand what it is you need to understand in order to make some sort of decision. You're at, uh, the overall energy right now is the Ten of Swords, meaning that you come to a point where something is about to come to an end or is in the process of coming to a close. And you may be delaying that. Gemini, you may be delaying that with the Knight of Pentacles and the Seven of Swords. Um, some of you may be procrastinating. I'm hearing that pretty strongly. So you really might be procrastinating. Others of you, you may be in the process of going through some sort of deep inner soul work or soul searching. That's only for a select number, like a small number of you. Okay. Um, either the reversal can be that you're in the process of doing something or there's some sort of resistance and for the most part gemini i feel like there's resistance here now this could be I, this could be energies of a cross watcher here okay but this is more focused on the gemini's energy of course this is a general reading so take what resonates and leave what doesn't if it if you're the cross watcher and this is actually resonating with you then take it if anything you know resonates with you as in like your storyline it's i might be saying it's for the gemini but it actually resonates more with you then take it again this is a general reading okay um also please don't try to fit things where they don't belong yeah that's just gonna confuse you and probably drive you crazy but you're delaying someone here, most likely the Gemini, you're delaying your own progress um, by not, by keeping yourself in a position to not do this inner soul searching. And for some of you, you're, I, I kind of hear you saying to yourself, whatever, I don't need to go within, like I already know all the answers. Well, if you know all the answers, then why haven't you made the decision yet? 
Okay. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see what happens here. So now let's just get into it. I'm going to just shuffle this up a little bit here. And then we will see what we've got for you. Yeah, Gemini? Excellent. Here we go. Okay. Hi, Spirit. Please make me a clear channel for all Geminis, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. Please bring forward the best messages to serve the highest good of all involved for the month of June 2019. Thank you so much, Spirit. All right, Gemini, I'm going to give this five shuffles, and then we'll see what we have for you here, okay? Also, there was something else I wanted to say. One, oh, goodness. There was something I wanted to say, and now I can't remember it. Uh, two, for my Geminis, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. Three. Gemini, Gemini, Gemini. Two more guys for oh that's what it was uh, keep in mind guys that just because these messages are coming out for the month of June um, it doesn't necessarily mean it has to resonate for June these are meant all of these readings all the readings that I put out whether it's the dailies or the monthlies all of these readings are meant to be timeless okay so whenever you're guided to watch it whenever it resonates for you that's when it resonates for you okay Times, times and stuff like that is just for organizational purposes, okay? All right, last shuffle for you, Gemini. For your month of June 2019, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. Boop. All right. Overall energy. Oh, we have the Two of Cups here. Okay. This could be a romantic relationship that we're talking about here. The strongest thing I'm getting with the Two of Cups is the union between the masculine and feminine energies within, okay? And I'm hearing a deep union. Um, and this could be why you're procrastinating. This could be why you need to do some sort of soul searching, uh, some inner soul work with the, the Hermit card that came out um, in order for this deep sense of union between the masculine and feminine in order for this union to take place. Now, for others of you, you are in fact dealing with a counterpart, a soulmate. You might be in a relationship with somebody right now in which there's some sort of stagnation, but that has to do with the fact that someone here, either the Gemini or the other person, maybe there are two Geminis, who knows? Um, take it as it resonates. But somebody here needs to do some sort of soul work, but I'm hearing procrastination is a big thing. Oh yeah, it sure is. It sure is a big thing because the next thing that you have underneath the two of cups is the two of swords indecision someone is not i'm hearing someone is not taking their turn which means maybe someone is not potentially not doing taking part taking part in their responsibilities in the situation here um it's almost as if like the ball is in someone else in, is in one of your courts right now and whoever's court the ball is in they're not playing they're not playing Mm. But then you have the Six of Wands. Underneath that is, ah, the Wheel of Fortune. And look, and look, and underneath the Wheel of Fortune is the Hermit, okay? Um, and then, yeah. Okay, so there is pride and ego involved here, you guys, with this Six of Wands energy. This, with the Two of Swords and the Six of Wands, what I'm getting here, Gemini, is that someone feels like they don't have to make any changes. They don't have to see the other point of view, see another person's side in the situation because for some reason, either you, Gemini, or the other person that you're involved with or the, the other people that you're involved with, this is not just you know specific to like love relationships or anything. This is just a general message. So this could be something, something that you're dealing with in the workplace. This could just be a friendship, an acquaintance, um, someone that you frequently cross paths with, uh, or it could be a romantic relationship. Um, running the whole spectrum of romantic relationships out there. This is general, yes? But someone's pride and ego is in the way and is saying, I don't need to make any changes because I'm good just as I am. Okay. Now, the one thing I want to say Gemini is if you're really good as you are, then 
I kind of want to ask, and now this may not apply to everyone, but my question, my follow-up question to that is, well, if you're good as you are, then why are you dealing with this conflict here? Or why are you dealing with this challenge, I should say? Because this is not necessarily a conflict between like two people or multiple people. This could be just an internal struggle or a challenge on your path. But with that, you have the Wheel of Fortune here. Um, uh, this could be either a good thing or a bad thing, um, but it depends on how you handle the energies around you, how you handle the situation. What the Wheel of Fortune is saying here, Gemini, is that you have the power to turn this around. This can either turn around and you could make a positive situation out of this, or you could help to heal and rectify the situation, or you can continue going down this road in this energy, in this vein, and... I, I, I kind of want to say things may just get worse for you between the two of you or in this relationship or in circumstance, types of circumstances like this. You know what I mean? Let's see what happens. So we're going to get into the, 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 the reading here. You could look at this as the first half and the second half of your month. I kind of suggest that you don't look at it that way. I suggest that you look at this as just the first half and the second half of your reading because time is an illusion and energies are fluid. So at any moment in any part of this reading, uh, a piece of a message could come through that could apply to uh, something that was at a different section in the reading. You know what I mean? So just, again, this is a general reading, so take it as it resonates, but you can look at it as any, any way that you want. First half of the month, second half of the month, or just the first half and second half of your reading. Yeah? First half of the reading here, first set of surrounding energies for you, Gemini. You have the Seven of Swords. Very first card in your first set of overall energy. So already the Hermit and the Seven of Swords have come back out. There is a deep sense of deception here. And to be quite honest, whoever is holding this prideful and egoic energy here with the Six of Wands and the Two of Swords is severely lying to themselves. And I'm not, that's not my conjecture. That's not my projection. That's not my ego that's not my opinion that's literally what i just heard when the seven of swords came out someone is sincerely deceiving themselves now that could also translate into that person deceiving the people around them and it could very much be trying to save face here keep up appearance with the six of wands the six of wands is a good card generally typically um it speaks of uh, uh, victory, taking a victory lap, success, achievement, overcoming. Um, but it also has a negative side. It can be being all up on your high horse. It could be um, pride, ego, trying to save face, uh, 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 riding around town or presenting yourself as if something is great or life is great when deep down you know for a fact that it's not. So that really could be how someone is deceiving themselves here. Now, typically that would be seen if the card was in reverse. However, when I do readings like this, I don't read reversals. I keep all the cards upright. But like in the pre-shuffle, it's, it's a free flow, right? So something can come out and it can turn upside down as it's coming out. And in that case, I'll read it that way. But here, I like to keep things upright and I just read the energy as it comes through yeah so that's why I'm kind of picking up and especially with the rest of the cards here I'm kind of picking up an energy of somebody deceiving being in an egoic and prideful energy and deceiving themselves you know between the two of swords and the seven of swords and then that hermit that was in reverse okay now with the two of cups here you could have a romantic relationship you could have a friendship uh, this could be family. This could be anything. But also, it also has to do with the balance between masculine and feminine energy. So for some of you, this could be a situationship is kind of how I want to describe it. That's literally what Spirit just said. A situationship that arises from the imbalance or the... Um, the rift between your own inner masculine and feminine energies because we all have these energies, yes? Okay. Getting back to your first set of surrounding energies, the Seven of Swords is coupled with the High Priestess. Okay. No, for some of you, your intuition is trying to t has been trying to tell you something for a while. 
But a secret is being kept. That's what I'm hearing. A secret is, in fact, being kept. There's some sort of deeper truth or inner wisdom, deeper knowledge that is being kept hidden. Now, this could be a situation in which you, you, whoever this individual individual is, you are deceiving yourself and through that sense of deception, the universe is keeping some sort of knowledge, some sort of wisdom or understanding from you because you are not willing to come, or this person, whoever I'm speaking to here, you're not willing to come out of this egoic and prideful standoff or situationship where that, so that is blocking the knowledge from coming forward towards you. At the other hand, you could in fact already know what the universe has been trying to tell you, but you're hiding it from yourself. You're deceiving yourself and saying, eh, whatever, I don't believe that. I don't, uh, I don't believe in all this intuition, woo woo bullshit, like blah, blah. Pride and ego, okay? But deep down there is an inner truth that needs to be revealed and that's really, really what this hermit energy was trying to say in the beginning when it came out in reverse, all right? I'm hearing whoever this is, this could be you, Gemini, this could be someone that you're connected with, but I'm, I literally just heard you're lying to yourself. Okay, second set of surrounding energies for you, Gemini, in the first half of your reading, you have the world. Okay, well, this is good. Or is it? Something's coming to a close here, Gemini, and that's what the Wheel of Fortune is saying. This can either close out in your favor, and I'm talking like for good, okay? The Wheel of Fortune could talk about a completion and closing out of a, like a karmic cycle or whatnot. Yes, absolutely. It definitely speaks to a closing out of a karmic cycle because the Wheel of Fortune absolutely does deal with karma. Yes, you get, it, you get back from the wheel what you, are, you, what you put in yourself. Okay, so, and also 10 being a completion. This is, this is in fact a completion of a karmic cycle, okay, Gemini? But this can either work in your favor in the sense that there could be some sort of reconciliation and coming together, okay, a balancing out of the situationship I just heard, or not. Either way, this is going to close out. And you can either be on, you, you can, it can either close out on a good note, on a positive note, or it can close out on a standoff. In which case, I don't know, I have no idea what would mean after that. I just don't. It's up in the air. At, at that point, I guess it's left to the individuals involved. I don't even know, I don't even know what that means. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Wheel of Fortune, no, I'm sorry, not the Wheel of Fortune, the, the, the world is coupled with the Seven of Pentacles. Yes. Either way, though, you have the opportunity to learn from the situation. Spirit keeps saying situationship. <laughs> um, either way, this is going to give you some, some really good things to think about. But I'm hearing specifically, this is probably, depending on how this closes out for you, Gemini, this could, this could really give you some serious karmic backlash. Because you're closing out a cycle here, and either one of you, or both of you, or all parties involved, even if it's more than two people, not everybody in this situation is doing their work that is necessary, that they're required to do, which was part of the agreement that you made when you came here, which is why you found yourself in this situation to begin with, all right? And when I say the agreement that you made when you came here, when you manifested into this physical body, in this physical time frame, in this physical manifestation or incarnation, um, and are dealing with the karmic energies between you and other people that stem from past lives together. Okay, but there could be some serious karmic backlash should you not do your inner work to help heal and deal with the karma, okay? 
And that's what the Seven of Pentacles in the world is saying here. Because the Seven of Pentacles is a harvest, okay? This is a time where you recognize what it is you're harvesting and how you've gotten the fruits of those labors and how to do better in the future. What do you want in the future? The Seven of Pentacles or this harvest energy is kind of like a checkpoint, okay? Where am I? How did I get here? And where am I trying to go? And how do, I look, how do I want my future to look different than what I've experienced or what I'm harvesting right now in the present? But I'm getting, see, I'm getting, I'm, 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 I'm getting an image of the, I'm hearing the karmic wheel is cycling, is cycling or is turning, but I'm getting an image of somebody in this situation looking back on this and thinking, why didn't I just do this when I had the chance? Because now I have so many other things to deal with on top of this or because of how this closed out, all right? Your challenge in the first half of your reading here, you have, ah, the Queen of Swords. It, there could be both of you or multiple people here coming through with this energy of the Queen of Swords. But to be quite honest, now this could be you, Gemini, as an air sign. This also could be a Libran. But this doesn't feel too good. This kind of feels like someone is being way too logical about this um, and is not even giving it a chance. That's kind of what I'm feeling like here with this Queen of Swords energy. In the challenge section, it's like someone's not giving this a chance. Someone's not willing to see eye to eye with somebody else. Someone is just way more comfortable cutting the situation off and moving on without taking into consideration the karmic backlash. Because this is someone that's extremely logical. I'm getting an energy of um, not even really believing in things like karma or reincarnation, past lives, blah, blah, blah. And, and I'm not, I, I don't, I'm not passing judgment on anybody that believes that or doesn't believe. Um, but karmic backlash is a real thing. So you might want to start investigating it. Now, the challenge also, instead of coming out of the Queen of Swords energy that might be negatively aspected, the challenge here is to take on the Queen of Swords energy and cut out all the frivolous, uh, superfluous bullshit that's getting in the way of this balance. That's represented by the Two of Cups and the karmic balance that's represented by the Wheel of Fortune. All right. Queen of Swords is coupled with ah the Page of Pentacles. So yeah, the challenge really is to cut out the bullshit and make some sort of offer, start over, um, reach some sort of new level of, of maybe commitment or understanding. Yes? Oof, okay. Your closing message or potential outcome in the first half of your reading here, Gemini, you've got, ah, the Five of Pentacles. Some sort of rejection. Um, maybe not feeling good enough, not feeling worthy enough. Maybe you could, make, you could be making someone else feel this way by your complete rejection of the situation, or someone could be making you feel this way by the complete rejection of the situation. Five of Pentacles is coupled with hmm, the Page of Wands, though. There is, this is, that's actually a pretty good thing. Um, in the face of some sort of rejection here, you're going to need to do some real soul searching, working on some self-discovery. The Page of Wands, to me, is an energy of self-discovery. I mean, you see how this guy is sizing up that wand there? It's like he's working on figuring himself out, discovering more about himself than he may not even known before. And I love that this page of wands is actually depicted as a grown man because to me that says that there is no moment in life, there is no age that you can reach in which there isn't any more for you to discover. It's beautiful. 
You could be dealing with a fire sign also. You could be dealing with a Leo specifically because of the Six of Wands energy. You could be dealing with a Sagittarius with this Page of Wands energy. But again, you could also be dealing with another Leo or uh, an Aries. There is a need. Interesting. Very, very interesting. I, I, I'm feeling like the person that's in this indecisive energy here and is putting up this front with the Two of Swords and the Six of Wands actually has some deep core wounds when it comes to worthiness and in order to really rectify and heal this situation between the 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 page of wands here and the hermit here somebody's got to do some soul searching somebody's got to go deep and find themselves again understand themselves okay that's really the only thing that's going, and, and, and if you are the person that is being rejected, okay, or you're on the other end of this situation in which you're, you would like to rec reconcile or heal the situation between you and someone else, and they're not really not even just trying, they're trying, not even trying to have it, and now you're feeling rejected because of it, you need to understand that their rejection of you really has no say on your personal worth. Your worth is not defined by someone else external to you. Your worth is defined by how you feel about yourself or how you perceive yourself, about who you know yourself to be. Okay? All right, Gemini. Getting into the second half of your reading here, first set of surrounding energies you have. Mm. The Four of Cups. Unrequited love, boredom, rejection, yes. There is definitely a sense of somebody is not feeling worthy enough to accept this cup of love that's trying to be offered. And this really does feel like a reconciliatory energy. The Four of Cups doesn't, doesn't usually mean that. Normally, the Four of Cups mean, it represents, like, like I said, unrequited love, boredom, um, Focused more, you could be focused more on society and what other people think and say rather than what this ace of cups that's trying to be handed to you um, really means. Because that is the ace of, the ace of cups in that sense is your cup of self-love, right? Um, Self-worth. The universe really could be trying to hand you an opportunity or somebody that you're connected with, either you, Gemini, or the other person. The, really could, the universe really could be trying to hand you some sort of opportunity here, but with the High Priestess and the Seven of Swords that came out in the very beginning of the reading, you know, in the surrounding energies, somebody is deceiving themselves about it and doesn't want to see deeper into the situation, even though, it's, even though that knowledge is literally being handed to somebody, all right? So that's why this feels like a reconciliatory energy, or at least this is, um, you know, in terms of some sort of reconciliatory energy. And that's what I'm seeing being handed to you, okay? Either you, Gemini, or someone else that you're connected with. Four of Cups is coupled with the Page of Cups. There it is right there. That's the reconciliatory energy. The Page of Cups is about, yes, is the dreamer energy, but the, also it's, it can be about reconciliation making some sort of gesture and apology. And it's very similar to this Page of Pentacles. The Page of Pentacles being that physical offer of some sort of commitment or some sort of starting over new physical reality or whatnot. The Page of Cups is that emotional side of that offer. So there is an opportunity to reconcile here, but someone just is not taking it. Refuses almost. That could have a lot to do with self-worth. Okay. Second set of surrounding energies in the second half of your reading here, Gemini, you have, mm, there's that Knight of Pentacles again. So now three of the energies have come out, Seven of Swords, Knight of Pentacles, and the Hermit from the uh, pre-shuffle. No one is asking you guys to rush into some sort of reconciliation. All we're asking you to do, says Spirit or the Universe, is to get the ball rolling. 
The Knight of Pentacles is the slowest moving knight in the deck. You could be dealing with an Earth sign, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn, uh, Virgo specifically, uh, because I do see the pages and the knights as the mutable energies. So in sense of the Earth signs, that would be Virgo. But also the Hermit, which came out also, re that represents Virgo, okay? Um, so you could be dealing with an Earth sign. But the Knight of Pentacles is the slowest moving knight in the deck. So what Spirit is saying here is no one is asking you to rush into reconciliation. We're just asking you to accept the offer. We're asking you, I'm just going to say this. This is going to sound harsh. I'm not trying to trigger anybody. I, I mean this with all due respect. But Spirit is asking someone to get off their high horse. Nobody is perfect, Gemini. Nobody. And if you're dealing with a Virgo <laughs> who thinks they're perfect, I mean, I have, uh, depending on what chart you're looking at or what system you're looking at, um, in the Western system, I'm a Virgo rising, so I understand a lot of that Virgo energy. I understand the perfectionism that could come from having that Virgo energy, okay? Um, it's very real, and I don't mean it in a derogatory sense. I'm not trying to trigger anyone. I'm not trying to offend anyone. But if you are dealing with a Virgo that has some sort of superiority complex, uh, you got to get off that high horse, honey. Yeah? Now, it doesn't have to be a Virgo. It literally could be anybody, but I felt compelled to say that. <laughs> Knight of Pentacles is coupled with mm, the Page of Swords. So it starts, you get the ball rolling by communicating. Now, the Page of Swords, this could be you. Actually, this is you, Gemini, because again, I do see the Pages and the Knights as the uh, mutable signs. So as far as air goes, that would be uh, Gemini. So this could be you, Gemini. Um, but the Page of Swords uh, also could be another air sign, Libra or Aquarius. But the Page of Swords is about clear, concise, blunt, to the point communication. It, and because of how blunt it could be, it can come across as immature, but also especially since this is a page, not like a knight, which would be like a step up, or a king or queen, right? Though you do have that queen of swords in the challenge in the beginning of the reading, or in the first half of the reading, excuse me. But the first step, Spirit is saying the first step towards reconciliation is communication, period. No matter how tumultuous it may be, okay, sure, you, you might want to, you might want to like hold your tongue a little bit and not go for the jugular right away. Both of you may need to do that, or you may just need to start communicating with each other. It could just be a situation in which you have like a little bit of small talk here or there. Hey, how you been? How you doing? Blah blah blah. Let's catch up a little bit. Friendly banter. I mean, it's got to start somewhere. Your challenge in the second half of your reading, Gemini, you have ascension, awakening, judgment. This is another card of reconciliation. Redemption, mostly, with, with judgment here. But someone is being called to open their eyes and see deeper into the situation, see other possibilities about the situation. That's the challenge here. There's some sort of enlightenment or higher calling. Um, now also, with judgment here, again, you don't necessarily, I, I feel like there's some sort of urgency here for, for some of you to rectify the karma between you and someone else. Please, I, I feel like your soul is saying this. For whoever this is for, please do not allow this to be closed out without reconciling or without healing the karma that's involved here. Uh, that's for someone, okay? Judgment is coupled with, hmm, my, my, the King of Swords, which is right underneath the Queen of Swords, which is in the challenge of the first half of the reading. 
Now here, this is what you want to be seeing when trying to re reconcile or rectify a situation. The king of swords with judgment. Now, I see the king of swords as a representation of some sort of like judge type energy. Yes? He presides over the courtroom. He is the type of energy that is objective and diplomatic. And for the most part, we'll, we'll hear out every piece of evidence that has a valid, well, yes, every piece of evidence, hear out all sides of the, part of the equation, even though he, there's a possibility he's probably come to his own conclusion already. But he'll hear you out. He'll see all sides. He'll hear all sides. In order for this, in order for someone to ascend here, in order for someone to see the bigger picture, they need to be willing to be diplomatic about this. That is your challenge in the second half of your reading here. Again, you could be dealing with an Aquarian. Officially, this is Aquarius energy, but also this could be you, Gemini, with the King of Swords. All right? Closing message or potential outcome in the second half of your reading here, Gemini. You've got hmm, the moon. Cycles. Okay. Intuition. I kind of feel like you can't rely on... You can't rely too much on the physical or what you would see with your physical senses in this situation. At some point, your intuition is going to have to get involved. And you're going to have to look deeper into this than you may have been in the past. There's also fear here involved. Emotions, your feelings. This may be a situation in which... Either you, Gemini, or someone else that's in, or this other person, or these other people, or whatever, however this resonates with you. It might be a situation in which someone has, doesn't have much of a connection with their emotions, or doesn't know how to handle their emotions, or doesn't want to handle their emotions. But you're going to need to. Your emotions are a very much, very important part of your existence here as a human being, you, I mean, you could go through life emotionless, but you're not, I'm, I'm hearing karmic backlash again. I mean, that's not going to help you, all right? The moon is coupled with <laughs> the fool. There is a leap of faith, absolutely a leap of faith here. And that could be where some of this fear is coming into play. That could also be where your uh, emotions are coming into play. You're going to need to follow your emotions. You're going to need to take some sort of leap of faith without being able to clearly see what's in front of you. Again, that could be why you have to rely on more than just your physical senses here. And for those of you that don't believe in, you know, extrasensory perception, first of all, I kind of doubt that you'd be watching this video. But second, for those of you that don't necessarily believe in it, it's time that you kind of start at least investigating and trying to open yourself up to things because ultimately your intuition is your best friend. Your intuition is the, the part of you that sees everything else that your physical senses cannot or will not perceive. So the stronger relationship you have with your intuition, the better off you'll be in existence, you know? All right, Gemini. So now let's get into your oracle guidance here. And I just want to I just want to let you guys well, I'm going to warn you a little bit. These can be pretty lengthy and I may end up just reading the whole thing because there tends to be a lot of good information in these cards. But we'll see what happens. OK, I'm going to give this three shuffles for my Gemini's Sun, Moon, Rising and Venus for the month of June 2019. And last shuffle for my Gemini's Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. Here we go. Best message, please, Spirit. Oracle guidance for my Gemini's Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus, June 2019. Here we go. All right. 
You have card number 22. She feels, she knows. And this is a balancing energy. Number two, twos are a balancing, harmonious, uh, reconciliatory energy. Uh, but 22 boils down to a four, which is, uh, again, balance, but also um, foundation, solidity, okay? So let's see what this says. Card number 22, she feels, she knows. Let me do a little bit of this. There's a lot of glare going on. That's better. An illumination is erupting from within you as a vision that is bringing what was once obscured into clarity. This is not likely to happen in a blinding, shocking insight, but as more of a softer, gentle knowing. It is like knowing something without understanding exactly when or how you came to know it. This insight will assist you and you are asked to honor it. You will know which insight it is at the right time. Your heart will tell you. You are therefore being asked to rely upon the clarity that is coming to you now or has just come, recently come. Gently but firmly from that place of knowing intend to act and take your next steps forward. <laughs> Sorry guys, I'm trying not to, here wait, maybe I should do a little bit of, yeah that's better, okay. Alrighty. Uh, this oracle comes to you with guidance, particularly about long-range or long-term developments. Something that is far bigger than the immediate situation, issue, or moment is of importance, although you will only have a dim sense of that possibility at best. The situation you find yourself in right now may not be one of joy, but in a time you will understand more of the bigger picture. You will come to see why things are happening the way they are, and you, how you are being helped on the next stage on, I'm sorry, and how you're being helped on to the next stage of your path, even though it may look like an obstacle right now. You are being asked to think in terms of long-term happiness. Sometimes this warrants change or even temporary restrictions in the short term. If you can't see how the present can possibly become what you sense the future to be, this message is especially relevant. Through the natural process of transformation, great, le great leaps are indeed possible. You simply must be prepared to surrender into the process with absolute trust. The Fool and the Moon. The Fool is an energy of taking a leap of faith with absolute trust and faith in the universe that you will, they will catch you. The moon is things aren't as they seem or not necessarily being able to see clearly and fear being involved because of that. But here, with the moon and the fool, you are being asked to have absolute trust. And you're also being asked here in your oracle card. Through the natural process of transformation, great leaps are indeed possible. You simply must be prepared to surrender into the process with absolute trust. This oracle brings you specific guidance. The situations in your current life are particularly geared towards a more significant manifestation that is coming to you according to your life path and purpose. This is a stage of preparation and of building, building a foundation that will hold you strong and centered as your creative journey unfolds and your life path becomes ever more brilliant and luminous. So keep plugging away, remain patient, but most of all, be hopeful and trust in the light you sense ahead of you. For it is the light that is within you simply revealed more fully. And all that is happening now is happening to that end. So there you have it, Gemini. Again, happy birthday to you guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope this was helpful for you. I wish I could have brought you a little more of a happier reading for your birthday month, but hey, don't shoot the messenger. <laughs> I love you guys, and I hope you're having a great month, and I look forward to, con to connecting with you again for the month of July. Yeah? Take care. Mwah! Bye!